I will never forget that evening. I noticed a fresh blush of blood staining my underwear. I was 12, and I called my mom, worried. When she brought me a pad and said simply, oh, you started your period, I hardly knew what she meant. I had heard my friends whisper it in their school bus. Once I asked them out of curiosity, what is a period? But their response had been, shh. My mom was the same. She said, there's no need to talk about it in front of your dad or say the word out loud. She also asked me to stay away from the prayer room while I was menstruating because my menstrual blood made me impure. The shame exists across society. My school in India only taught us about menstruation as part of our advanced science curriculum. By then, we were 16 and had already internalized the shame. Some of my friends are asked not to enter the kitchen while menstruating. I know neighbors who isolate themselves during their period and are passed food through the door. I've had intense arguments with my mom who asked me to stay away from people's houses during festivals because I might offend them by entering their houses while I'm menstruating. Half of the world's population menstruates, yet the shame surrounding it snatches opportunities from millions. I understood this fully when I was volunteering at an Indian hospital. I met this woman whose son had cancer, and I taught him arts and crafts before his appointments. On one visit, she suddenly burst into tears and admitted that she was on her period but couldn't afford period products. She had to cross the city on buses, buying medications and taking her son to appointments with just a piece of old sari cloth that was now soaked and tearing apart. As someone who took my period products for granted, I was baffled. How could anybody go about their day without them? Imagine working, going to school, running errands, all while bleeding but without period products. Could you do these things and do them well? This is a reality for 23 million girls in India alone. In many communities in India, Nepal, and elsewhere, menstruators isolate themselves in period huts, missing school and work because of this normal biological process. At the age of 16, I founded the Period Society to teach people the biology of menstruation and improve access to period products in low-income and marginalized communities where people often resort to harmful alternatives like rags, ash, and even grass. A youth-led organization, today it has 500 plus volunteers across 30 plus chapters, Pan-India, who serve as peer educators and lead on-ground campaigns to serve 45,000 plus people. We have distributed over a million period products and educated people about their safe usage. At the heart of our work lies the understanding that ignorance breeds taboos. When people lack an understanding of their own bodies, they buy into superstitions that tell them that their menstrual blood is dirty blood. We should all care about menstrual equity if we truly wish to accelerate gender equality. 
That means making sure that this normal biological process isn't holding anyone back from achieving their full potential in society. Each of you can start with a small but powerful step. Drop any euphemisms. Aunt Flo, that time of the month, Shark Week, and say the word period aloud. I used to flinch at the thought of saying it in public. Now I say it in front of all of you here because I have nothing to be ashamed of. If you are a parent, talk about it to your children, regardless of their gender. If you're an educator, advocate for a comprehensive sex education program at your institution. If you run a workplace, make sure your washrooms are stocked with free period products. Call on your local legislative bodies to make period products freely accessible to communities that cannot afford them, and take the pink tax off menstrual products. Most importantly, Open up the conversation. There's no better way to break a taboo than talking about it loudly and openly. If we truly are to achieve gender equality, it's time to end the stigma, period.